Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's almost high noon, so it's time for me to ask questions. But um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Governor Perdue, for taking this on. You're the right guy for the job. These are tough times in agriculture. We've got uh, commodity prices and livestock prices below the cost of production, uncertainty about trade, concerns about disease, and uh, two crop years left in, in terms of implementation of this Farm Bill before we start writing a new one. And I look forward to working with you on, on, the, on the next Farm Bill as well as continuing to implement this one. I know we won't have any problem getting you to come to South Dakota as long as we still have pheasants in South Dakota, <laughs> so I expect you to be there. I've got, I've got a, a, a number of questions I need to cover quickly, so if you could just answer yes to all of them, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, in terms of the current Farm Bill, the past administration showed a lot of inflexibility with regard to, to administration uh, in a number of areas. Uh, the commodity title, Title I, the ARC payments, and the data that was used and to, to calculate those payments, uh, CRP vegetative cover management practices and equitable CRP acreage distribution were all things that where we don't think the past administration was, uh, was following the intent of Congress. So with two years left on that farm bill, will you be willing to work with me and my staff on these issues to make improvements in program administration, make sure those programs are operating in the way in which Congress intended? Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Governor Perdue, I know you're, I know you're aware of the, the, the recent uh, tainted Brazilian meat scandal, which has resulted now in USDA issuing a press release announcing additional steps that they're taking to ensure that our food supply is kept safe. None of the facilities implicated in that scandal, the Brazilian meat scandal, have shipped meat to the United States, according to USA. But and the question is, do you believe that accelerated testing of all the incoming shipments of raw meat from Brazil will provide adequate protection, or should we begin to think about uh, triggering uh, USDA, to impose, USDA to impose an outright shutdown if, if there's uh, unsafe meat? Senator, I believe that the, uh, the men and women of the uh, FIS, uh, FSIS uh, uh, are doing a wonderful job going to the 100% uh, inspection they are coming in. Uh, I'm concerned, obviously, if we go to uh, embargoing at this, where, where these plants were not shipping in the U.S., if we go to embargoing or putting a, a shutdown on there, there will be retaliation there for our products, or maybe around the world as well. Uh, we already know that uh, we've had some uh, high path avian influenza and some countries have responded in that way. So while that's very, very localized, I don't want to punish another country, but I, I do uh, want uh, USDA inspectors to be on the job with a 100% type of inspection of any products coming in uh, into the United States. Okay. Um, we both come from uh, states where we grow trees. The trees in South Dakota grow a little slower than the tree, the pine trees do in your home state. But in the last half decade, we've seen a rapid increase in mortality. It's up 53 percent and a decrease in growth, down 69 percent uh, in our state. Unfortunately, our situation isn't unique uh, with over 82 million acres of national forest under stress from fires, insects, or both. And I know that Senator Bennett touched on this, but can I get your commitment to, uh, to focus on turning around the national forest and expanding the management that we need to create jobs in healthy stands of timber? Senator, I, I w absolutely, you can have my commitment. I think that the, uh, I view the United States uh, Forest Service and our United States Forest as uh, uh, challenges, uh, opportunities clothed in challenges right now, and I think there's a real opportunity to make these forests healthy. Uh, I do come from a state where it's mostly private ownership. Uh, my sense from min visiting with many of you is that uh, we have just not really been good neighbors in a lot of places in, in taking care of the public uh, stewardship portion where many private landowners would. So I look forward to giving those best management practices leading and inspiring the United States Fire Service to take pride in the way they would care for it just as it was their own. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I know this got touched on once already as well, but um, agriculture, of course, helps build a strong U.S. economy. It's a number one industry in my state, but I think it's critical to our national economy and especially in our rural communities. Um, and the RFS has been an essential driver of growth in rural areas of our country. And uh, the certainty of the policy has created jobs and spurred added research and investment. Um, can you commit to ensuring that we'll have a strong RFS to provide economic security for these rural communities? I can do that, and I'm happy to have the, also the President's commitment of his, his concern and interest in that area as well. So uh, uh, you absolutely can have that commitment. 
appreciate that. My time's expired. I thank you again for taking this on. We look forward to working with you and, and uh, not only on, the, as I said, this farm bill, but the, the one to come, which we'll be getting started on very right. soon. Thank, thank you. Sam.